Hi everybody and welcome to Title Unboxed. We're joined today by the 1976 Olympic gold medalist and five-time world champion, Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> Ray, how you doing? Hey Doc, Good how you doing? You All right, buddy. Thanks for welcoming us into your home gym. It's a great setup here. Appreciate it. It's easier. It is easier, isn't it? <laughs> Once you get used to working out at home, it's like, I'm not going somewhere. That's too much hassle. <laughs> That's too much, yeah. yeah. Well, this is, this is kind of a milestone because you were actually our first podcast guest and now you're our first in person. We've not done one face to face since right. the whole pandemic and all that. So this is cool. You're setting another record for us. Well, thanks. So let's talk about, you know, I think all fighters are driven by a demon, something inside them that they need to exercise or, or is something they need to prove. What was it for you as a fighter? What really drove you? You know, that's, I've never been asked that question. I don't know, I was, because I want, I want to win. I want to, to overcome, to beat the odds. I mean, so many things would go through my mind, especially I was in 100% shape, total shape and more. And um, I always wanted to surprise people. And, you know, against the Tommy Hearns, the marvelous Marvin Hagler, Wolf Benitez, Roberto Duran, I mean, my, my career, was so um, amazing, and and now here I'm at the tender age of 66. I miss it. I do miss it. I don't miss getting hit, right. uh, but I miss preparation and beating the odds, like I said. Well, you're here in the crowd. You don't here get that crowd. anywhere else in any part of your life. That kind of <clears throat> adoration and just that excitement level. You just don't. I mean, it's you know people say, well, you, you know you 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 know. Just call it quits. Just call it quits. It's because I believed in myself. I truly believed in myself. It was not BS. It wasn't. But I believed that I could win, and I think that's one of my one of my main assets. That it was not. I'm not going to BS myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you said at one point. You said um, a fighter has to have a certain amount of ego. You have to be a little bit egotistical to yeah. be successful in this yeah. sport. You have to be. There has to be an ego, because that ego translates into determination. It's like, I mean, this is how I feel, and this is how I felt back in the day. I, I felt I could beat anybody if I prepared myself, and I, and I, I did a pretty good job of that. But I look back on it now, and they made me who I am today. They made me a better fighter. They made me a better champion. They made me a better and actually a better, better person to be preparation. You gotta be focused. Yeah. Tunnel, I call it tunnel vision, Yeah. Just, just there. Well, the ego helps you reach that pinnacle of success, but it's also part of what makes it hard to walk away. It's and hard, it up. yeah, it, it, it's hard to walk away, especially if you had not prepared yourself for it. Mm -hmm. it's, t it's tough, I man, all of a sudden you come from nothing and then you hit the limelight um, and everyone's nice to you, this and that, for the most part. Uh, yeah, it's it's hard to let it go. Myself included. I'm, I just, you know, I, I made those ill-fated comebacks. But you know what? That made me say, you know what? I'm okay. I've done my share. It's time to move on and be productive somewhere else. Right. You know, we talked. We talk a lot about before this and just in everyday life, we talk about some of the current day fighters. You had your idols growing up. Mm -hmm. Us as older guys, other older fighters, do we tend to romanticize the fighters of the past and make them a little bit bigger and more grandiose than they actually were compared to today's fighters? Or is there really a difference between fighters back then, their toughness, their um, tenacity compared to today's fighters? That's another uh, good question. Um, I, I don't know how I, I don't know how to answer that, but I think that I always, we always we always say my era, my era, you know, and I I, I feel that I felt that way and I feel that way now, you know that we a little mm -hmm. faster, a little stronger, yeah, uh, a little more in shape, some of something of that one nature, you yeah. know, but it's it's okay, you know, people have their own favorites. Yeah, I like what boxing is today. There's so much talent out there. Yeah, there really is. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to ask you something you've probably been asked a million times. I know you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to ask you 
if you could beat Floyd Mayweather. We both know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But how would you go about it? Strategically, how would you go about beating a fighter like a Floyd Mayweather? Because I fought his father, and his father, I tell you, Floyd Sr. Was, was sharp, super, super fast. Just didn't, he didn't carry the power uh, of Floyd Jr. Um, and if I, people ask me all the time. In fact, Floyd and I, we talk trash to each other all the time. Uh, I said, I'll, I'll beat Floyd. And I told him, I said, man, like father, like son, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it doesn't fall apart from the trees. So. <laughs> but, um, it, I, you know, that's kind of a dream fight. That's kind of yeah. a, one of those special moments, uh, interactions, because I, I know if, if I was 20 years old, 22, mm -hmm. what, what could and would happen. What would have happened? How would how would you have broke him down from a physical, strategical standpoint? What would you have done that all of the other fifty plus of his opponents couldn't do? Uh, just call him up. Call call Floyd up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not going to tell you his weaknesses. But. I know. I, I was trying to get that actually. No, no. It's it, it, it'd be kind of a cat and mouse game. Uh -huh. You know. I mean, he's quick. He's fast. I I was fast. I had decent speed, and I had power. You know. Um, I, it'd be like a chess match. Yeah. You know? Durant so, said he would have, would have taken, gone to the body, broken him down to the body. He would have broke me down to the body? No, Durant said he, that's what he would do with oh, me. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I would do that too, you know, because mm -hmm. um, Floyd had good foot movement and yeah. what have you. But I, yeah, first thing I would do, and I can tell him now because I know it never happened, yeah. but I would go to his body and every now and then go up here. Mm -hmm. Not straight, but up here. Yep. Yeah, kind of a looping right hand. Um, I can talk about it now because, you know, I'm like 66. Yeah. How, how old is Floyd, by the way? How old is Floyd? He's, four, he's in his low 40s. Oh. Okay. 42, 43, anything? I'm not really sure. Yeah, but it 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 will be a pleasure and it will be an honor going up against someone yeah. of that magnitude. Well, those matchups don't happen, but they're always fun to they talk about. Yeah, that's good to yeah. talk about. It's so hypothetical. So yeah. looking back on you, again, you're 66, you've got some life perspective, 60 feet looking down. Now, um, what was Sugar Ray's best attributes, mentally, physically, um, just all around in the ring? You know, when you assess yourself. And I talk about this when I do motivational speaking. I said, you have to believe in yourself because if you don't, no one else will. I always felt more, uh, let's say, confident when I, Beat the odds. I, I, I love when people say, well, there's no way you could, you could, you could compete against uh, Tommy Hearns or, or Duran or Hagler. Or, I, I, lo I love that. I, I love beating the odds. I've always, I've always been that way from day one. I started boxing when I was like nine. Kid hit me in the nose. I retired that. I, I retired, <laughs> retired one, of, one of many times. I retired. Oh, oh, sure. I came back at 10, about 13, 14 and put the gloves on, and i tell you something, Doug. It was like I found boxing, boxing found me, we found each other. That, I was meant to be a boxer. And I was, and again, I was shy, non-confrontational, quiet, but when I put those gloves on, I, I, it's therapy. It came natural. It's, it came natural, exactly, it came natural. We talked a little bit earlier about the Duran fight. You know, some fighters suffer their first loss and they're never the same. They just can't recapture that same magic. In your case, and some other fighters, you suffer a loss and you come back better. You come back smarter, you come back stronger. How did that go for you? When you lost to Duran, your, your mindset was like, I'm done. I, just, I don't wanna take a beating like that again. How did, how did you talk us through that process from going there, I'm quitting, to uh, Jenks or whoever, give well, me the fight, give well, me the fight. Well, I, I believe, first of all, that I would beat Duran. I, I just felt that he was too small guy, you know, too small. Yeah, he wasn't that big to me, but he, he in that ring, he beat me here though. He actually beat me more mental because he would, he would, you know, shove me, kick me, give me the finger and like, give, you know, some other things. And uh, it, it affected me because I, I wasn't that experienced. I mean, in the ring, I, I, I was okay. I could survive, but he got to my brain. So he also made me changed my uh, fight plan because originally I was gonna box him and do the right thing. I was so angry with him because of, how, because of what he said to me. And Duran and I talked about this, and it worked. He said it worked. 
And um, I just tried to just beat him at his own game. That was the worst thing in the world. But it also was the most, most valuable thing in the world because it made me a better fighter. Great lesson. Smart, great lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was smarter. So the next time, I, I, I beat him up here with this kind of stuff, pow, sticking my chin out, all those kind of things, you know. I, if, you really, if you really look back on that, the Ram, he, who's a beast in the ring, but he, he, he was so frustrated. And people laughing at him, he just like, oh, I don't want it anymore. Well, no one had certainly done that thing before. And that was... Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's just... Territory. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I, I think back on those moments and those times. And um, I learned that you don't always just have to do it this way. You can do it this way. So when you lost, I mean, your, your immediate thing, did you doubt yourself? Did you think, well, maybe I'm not make, cut out for the pros? This is a, this is a, a sign that I'm, I'm not going to be that, the fighter that I thought I would be? Or, you know, how did that process go? Pain, Mentally, how did you turn that around to pain, go? Painful. It was so painful. And, uh, it's, you know, when you are still at the gym or still at the arena or whatever, you know, I was, hey, man, you know, you want to fight, man. Was that fight? You, you do this. And it gave me encouragement and everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to hear that, and I'm in, I'm in mental and spiritual pain. And I remember crying, and just it just felt like it was so unreal that I lost. I lost my first, I lost my, I lost my championship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I got home, and my wife, Juanita, and I uh, went to Hawaii somewhere just to get away, and the day I got there, the, that that night, next morning, I'm I'm on the I'm on the beach running, <laughs> <laughs> and people and some of the fans say, hey 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 Shirley, you won that fight, man. You you know because it was close, but you, you you won that fight, man. You should have boxed him instead. People on I mean fans tell me this, and I remember that same day or that same morning, I called Mike Trainer, who orchestrated my whole boxing career. I said, Mike, I want to fight Duran again. He said, Ray, are you on vacation? I said, yeah, but I want to fight Duran again. And said, in fact, I'm coming home in a couple of days. I cut my vacation short. And that's how it all kind of, you know, started to play itself. Yeah, started to, I, all I thought about was Duran. Because I, I thought, I actually, I, I thought that I would beat him mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. Because he, he was, you know, actually he's not my, my height or my weight. But um, I didn't do. I didn't. I didn't maintain my tunnel vision because mm -hmm. I was. I was considered beating Duran by that much. Right. Yeah. Interesting. It, 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 it's so much you can learn about yourself when you in that moment. Yeah. You know, it's because I. I swear to God, Doug, when he was hit me, boom, boom, I said, "Who else is in this ring?" Because I, I. I mean, hit me so many times and and so. Were powerful. They was. I mean, they. He, he was a strong kid. He was strong hands guy. Of stone. Yeah. For a reason. There you go. Mono, <laughs> mono the hands of stone. That that was true. Yeah. You bring up my trainer. I want to. I want to touch on that because I've talked to some people about this. You know, you guys really changed the blueprint of boxing for how you dealt with promoters, promoting yourself, um, how much, how much your purse was dictating mm -hmm. some of that. Yeah. You know the, Floyd Mayweather, again, bringing him up, he's done a great job of that. But he's, yeah. he's taken the, the blueprint you guys set that, um, you know, Sugar Robinson first established. Yeah. He was the first guy to kind of say, this is how much I'm getting paid. I'm getting ticket sales. I'm getting this, this, and this. Right. And I'm fighting on my terms. Um, you know, wow. what was your business relationship like with Mike Trainer? And just for the people listening and watching, um, the business side of it, how do you structure that so well, that you kind of had control of your own career. Well, it was inevitable, because I mean, when I would, after the gold medal, I was gonna go to the University of Maryland, further my education, get a good job, and take care of my parents and myself. But my father was on his deathbed. He was very sick, had to, uh, he just fought. He never, he never complained about being, uh, being ill or being hurt or painful. And so Jenks Morton, who was a dear, my mentor and everything, Said, I want to turn you on to Mike Trainer, and uh, he's a guy who's honest and he's smart. He's this, he's that, and it was Mike Trainer who, actually, if it wasn't for him, 
uh, I wouldn't be a boxer, a professional boxer, because mm -hmm. he gave me hope. He said, there's a chance that you can be an independent contractor. You can be your own man. You can be your own promoter. And because of the, you know, the back at back the platforms back then, yeah. everything was like on network television. So, so people knew me. I, I had a, let's say, a value, and things. I had the most honest people, and I mean, really, I'm almost crying. So that's why I'm, I'm slowing right. down. I mean, yeah. But you did the right thing. You surround, purposefully or not, I, you yeah. surround yourself with the right people that you could trust. Yeah. That had your back. And that's such a huge part of this business. Why so many fighters don't have something when they're done. But didn't you know? but I didn't know that until I, I I knew that that I was with good people, and uh, I thank my man, James Morton, because um, I I, did, I didn't, didn't know I, I thought all everyone has to go to the, some other promoter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I I'm not saying all the promoters are bad. There's a lot of great promoters who's going to be great eventually, but. Um, you know what? All I thought about was my fight, my next fight. Mm -hmm. And I would fight sometimes uh, once a month. So every now and then, almost twice a month. I, I gained the experience, because it's a, it's a whole night and day thing with amateur boxing, professional boxing. I mean, yeah. the, the experience, they, they know the, but I, I, I loved it. And I did it for, because I only did, for, I only turned pro because of my father and mother, and to give them a, a life and the, and the biggest thing that took place, and one of the biggest things that took place was when I, I took my parents, I blindfolded them, took them to this, this, this house that I had just bought for them and gave them the keys and said, this is your house and you don't have to work another day in your life. I tell you, it was like a dry eye in that. It's gotta be one of the greatest moments oh, to do that for. Doc, it was, I mean, even when I, I think about it, it's like they deserve that much more, my parents. Parents and uh, I mean it's but because of boxing. I mean this these things will not have yeah. happened. It's, it's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. That's what I want. Yeah, fighting. it's a beautiful thing, man. Um, we talked a little bit about you know you said you had said before that you, when you before a fight you could look in the mirror and you could oh. knew when Ray Leonard showed up versus <laughs> Sugar Ray Leonard mm. and the, how fight how difficult or easy that fight was going to be. Along the same lines. Fighters tend to be a superstitious sort. You know, the Mata had his, his leopard skin robe that mm -hmm. he had to have. Um, trying to think of who else. Jack Dempsey, I think, had a lucky, oh, had a lucky sweater. Or majority, of, oh, majority of them. Did you? They Did you have we, some superstitions? Yeah, I mean, I, I look in that mirror, Doug. I look in that mirror, and if I see Sugar Ray Leonard, nine times out of ten, it's over. It's done. But every now and then, it happened like only f maybe five times. I look in the mirror and I see Ray Leonard, the civilian, and I'm like, this is not gonna happen. I know, I mean, I know, like, I can't back out, but I, I just know that it's gonna be a tougher fight than, than normal, and it has been. I mean, the, again, losing to Duran the first fight was so painful because I, I could have won that fight if I did, if I did the right thing. The, approached it the right way. Um, even the, the second Hearns fight, uh, I, I honestly thought Tommy Hearns should have got the decision. He deserved that decision. And uh, Really good, but it comes back down to a, men, a mental mindset. It's that, mental. that, that yeah. tunnel vision well, you're well, talking about. For me, that's how it works. That's how it operates. It's, it's tunnel vision. Because every now and then, I, cause I had, at first, when I first turned pro, I had a huge entourage. I had a lot of guys, or in, uh, just just people. <laughs> they were my friends, but they just people. But you didn't know until you were famous. I, I know, I know. <laughs> and um, you know, it's one day my guy said, my guy said, Mike Trainers. He said, Ray, even James Morton. He said, you, sh you got too many people. You're bringing too many people because mm -hmm. you they're distracting you because they're, they're in their hotel room and say, well, can I get some sodas? Can I get some yeah. drinks? Yeah. And I, I, I called out and give them that, give them that. That's not the way, I mean. But again, it goes back to having the right people around you. The right say, people. You gotta, gotta you got these guys. Yeah, this. yeah, and, and James Morton did too. He said, Ray, you know what? You should get a, I'm, he said something like, I'm gonna send you these guys home because they, they are distracting you. And I didn't understand. I said, well, they, you know, they, they're not doing anything to me. I didn't say that, but it, it 
It was true. Yeah. Going back to superstitions, but I know we talked and you talked a lot, of, a, a lot about oh. this, about the Johnny Lohan fight. And it, because we're talking about Sugar Ray Robinson, he dreamed he, that he killed Jimmy Doyle. You know that story. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, it, yeah. Even though everybody's like, no, it's not going to happen. It's just a dream. It actually happened. Yeah. So same with the Donnie Lawn fight. You, dream, you dreamed that he knocked you down at some mm -hmm. point. Did you dream the round? No. No. That, 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 go ahead, go ahead. No. That was mysterious. That's the thing. And that's the thing I'm like, you know, what, what, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? I thought it was, a, it was a fourth round. I go down. I said, okay. Kind of hit you on the back of the head almost, didn't he? Like a, yeah, because if you hit anyone up. Like skated off the back of your kind of. Yep, it, it, crossed, cro <clears throat> it actually crossed my skull here. And it just, I went down. And I said, well, okay, that's it. And I, I, but I wasn't hurt. I was stunned, but not hurt, if that makes any sense. And because mm -hmm. I'm trying to paint the picture here. Because I was more shocked and like this. It did happen, and uh, I waited for him, and he came at me. Uh, and he tried to take me out. He, he threw every he threw every punch, and I, when I then I retaliated, and I hit him in the be be belly, and he did that, and that's when it all you need to turn it, it was all yeah. I, didn't, I knew I could turn around. It just in fact, I didn't even think about it. It just happened. My hand, if I hurt you. Nine times out of ten, you, you're going to be gone. Okay, we've talked about your killer instinct was... Kill I mean, oh, yeah. Sensational. Oh, it yeah. Really, it really yeah. made... It was a lot of what made you as a fighter. That if, you, if you saw that opening, if you smelled blood in the water, it was done. My brother, Roger, because he was... In fact, he, he took me to, to the gym and said, come on, don't you start boxing. And he used to beat me up all the time. He laughing. And then I, I just kept... I was so focused. I just kept going, kept going, kept going. So in a couple of years, I kick his butt I every, <laughs> every every time. And then I I know one time like I hit him, I hurt him, and then or knock him down. He said, Ray, "Look at your eyes. Are you trying to kill me?" Because <laughs> I I go in that you get in the zone, that tunnel vision. I call it. Yeah. yeah, in the zone. Yeah, yeah the tunnel vision. It, it is amazing. Cause people like my wife. She she say, "Ray, how can you be a boxer? You look you look so." I don't, don't look the part. You don't look the part. Yeah, that's exactly what she said. You don't look the part. But when I get a guy in trouble, I go, I go for it. Even if I'm exhausted, 100%, I will come up with additional. You find more and, gas in the tank. I call it, yeah, fat, more gas in the tank, intestinal fortitude. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, and I, I get that from my parents, my mom and dad. They were they tough. That's good. For the family, yeah. That's great. So the Lalon fight, do you think that was a premonition? Or do you think because you had that in your mind, it brought that, uh, that incident? Dude, I think it was. I, but it, it's you, never happened. Was it happened. a premonition? Or? Yeah. yeah. Prom I, I was when I, I was sleeping the night before the fight, and I dreamt that I was getting knocked down. So I'm in the ring, and I'm a little nervous. He, he's a, he may not be a, a, a home, you know, a, a, a big name he fighter, was, but he was big. He was, he a, was big a big guy. and was champ, you and champ, a and a champ, right? I think he was a little bit underrated. He was. He didn't get his just due. Yeah. He hurt me so many times. In fact, I told him, I said, I said, man, you know, you had me hurt around this round. See, see, see. Watch, what's that? He said, why didn't you tell me back then? <laughs> why didn't you show it? <laughs> I didn't <laughs> show it. But when I hit him in the belly, but again, but he still hurt me when he was throwing uppercuts uh -huh. and short punches. And I, I went back for him, and I just, oh, you know, I just, it, it's hard to describe what takes place up here mm -hmm. sometimes, and here, right, and yeah, and, and there, you know, it's, it, it's required, yeah, and never give up, never, and never give in. Celebrity boxing, boxing matches are all the thing right now. So let me, I got to ask you this: if you could, if you could step through the ropes with any opponent, we had the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. Uh, I can't even think of all the ones that have come about. If you could step in the ring, through the ropes with one guy, past, present, who would it be? George Foreman. George Foreman. <laughs> you, you, you just sort of like reach for the mountain. You pick the biggest guy in the bunch. <laughs> really? That's who you'd want to do? Why? George. Yeah, George, Why? George couldn't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> you like, like the bigger slow guy. I rush. Yeah. 
joy, joy. Yeah. But jo- I, lo- I, lo- I love joy, That'd be joy. That, that, that attracts some attention. Yeah, but George, George is like, a, he's a big, I mean, look how big he is. Yeah, it's even still. But I also, I remember vividly when Ali fought George Foreman. Mm-hmm. And I heard that, I cried. Because George he was coming off beating uh, Joe, Joe Frazier. Frazier and, and I mean, everyone, he, he was just annihilated. He dominated Joe dumb, Frazier, dumb, which dumb, nobody had done yeah. before. And I, I, I actually cried, and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, Ali. And then Ali was letting him hit, him, hit, hit mm. go against the ropes, and George hit him in the body. I mean, can you? I mean, George, George is like a. I can't even describe him. Like, what comes close? Because yeah. he's so strong, such a bit, a massive of a guy. And uh, Ali's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all you got? That's all you. Because Ali was in here. Well, Ali even to take those body shots is <sighs> yeah. phenomenal. I mean, that's hard to imagine. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine taking shots from a guy that big, like George, with that much strength. I mean, he, he, he hit Ali to the body so hard. I mean, just coming, just coming and having a little bit of angles. And I'm like, oh my, I, I, again, I think I was crying again, because I figured that would be pretty much it for Muhammad I mean, doing this and, and did that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it was like, that's when I, I appreciated boxing more so, because it's, it's more mm. here and heart. It definitely wasn't that case. He just out he out thought him. Out thought him. Out thought him. Yeah. And uh, but but George is just whew, a beast. A beast. It's an uh, epic fight. Oh, epic fight. Yeah. So finally, let's talk about the new glove line. We'll come around mm-hmm. to that. Uh, for me, what sets it apart is it's not like cheap sporting goods stuff or like you know you've done some toy deals in the past. This is authentic training gear. Um, did a great job designing it. I want you to talk a little bit about just what inspired this whole thing. Well, I've always thought about uh, upping the, uh, the value and the, the, of what gloves mean. I mean, that, that's, your, that's your job, that's your yeah. life, that's your sport. Tools of the trade. Tools of, there you go, tools of the trade. And um, it's, because my hands are small too, and I, I just need that, that, I need that fit. And this is it. This is it. This is what. It was taking a while. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to come to fruition. Yeah. I didn't. Th- and then when I said, Ray, we got it. I think we got it. We got it. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And the red and white, and that, the, co- that, yeah, the, the color. Classic. Classic. Classic color. You know, so. Uh, no. It was. <laughs> <laughs> when you traditionally had hand problems, so the softer foams was key, a key part of that. So the protect your hands well and you don't you know even if you just got some bad gloves on but I, I, I mean because again my hands are small and somewhat I don't want to say brittle but they they were gave me problems yeah more so in in my amateur um, career mm-hmm. they would give me problems and then in my turn pro every now and then I'll get that hand problem but um, especially now especially now I, yeah I, I can fight Three times a week. Wow. Yeah. Nice. No problem. So were you expecting to come back then? Unless it's you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ray, it's great sitting down with you again. I appreciate the time. All right, uh, again, welcoming us into your home gym. It's a, It's been a pleasure, as always. Are you serious about that, you and I? Um, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. I might let you get a little, a little longer. <laughs> I'll give it just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the tennis court thing first. Then we we'll see how okay, I do okay, against you okay, on that. Okay, then that's okay, maybe kind of okay, sets okay. the tone, and I'll, I'll know if I need to take the next step or back off. No, whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on our Title Boxing YouTube page.